In this lecture, we're going to be talking about some of the bacterial structures that exist outside of the cell wall, um, including flagella and fimbria or pili. And we're also going to talk a little bit about how bacteria use these different structures to move um, and how chemoattractants can actually in, um, influence bacterial movement. So we're going to start first by talking about an appendage called fimbria or pili. And these two words can be used interchangeably. And pili are fine hair-like protein appendages that extend outward from the cell wall into the environment. And you can actually see fimbria on this bacterial cell here. There are many fimbria all along the outer edge of this bacterial cell. They're quite thin and they're short in length. And generally the function of pili is to attach bacteria to solid surfaces and kind of adhere them onto whatever media that they're growing on. In addition, there are some specialized pili that can work to uptake DNA from the environment during a process called transformation, which we'll cover later in the course. And there are also um, specialized pili called sex pili that allow DNA to be passed from one bacteria to another um, during a process called conjugation, which we'll also cover later in the course. But for the purposes of right now, the main function of, of the kind of structural pili appendage is to attach bacteria to solid surfaces. And they're much shorter and thinner than the other appendage that we're going to discuss, which are flagella. And here you can see a flagella is much longer and it's a little bit thicker than the fimbria on this bacteria. You can actually see several flagella here on this bacterial cell on the bottom. These flagella are thread-like appendages that, as I said, are much longer than pili or fimbria, and they're also much thicker. And their main function, or really only function, is in motility or movement of the bacteria. And so what does a flagella look like at the kind of molecular level? Flagella are built um, of basically three different parts. There's a basal body or the base of the flagella that's kind of buried in the cell wall. There's the hook, which is a little bit more external and it hangs into the outside environment. And then there's the long process or the filament. And so, as I said, the basal body you can see here in a gram negative cell and here in a gram positive one. It's just the base structure of the flagella. It's the part of the flagella that anchors the flagellum into the cell envelope or the cell wall and it holds it in place, attaches it to the bacterial cell. The hook you can see here is a short curved part that links the base of the flagellum to the filament and it provides some flexibility for that flagellum to spin and move. The part that actually moves the most, this long portion of the flagellum that extends outward from the bacterial cell is called the filament. And it's basically made of a protein called flagellin that's arranged in a hollow cylinder. And what's interesting is the way that flagella are actually built is from the bottom up. And so here you can see the basal body of the flagella, and you can see those flagellin proteins that make up the filament. They're actually fed up through the basal body, out the cell envelope to the outside, and they're added row by row to grow that flagella in length until it reaches um, its typical 20 nanometers in length. And you can actually see that process illustrated here where proteins are added in a stepwise fashion to create this filament cylinder of the flagella. And so bacteria can have different arrangements of their flagella or different numbers of flagella. There are some bacteria that don't have any flagellum, flagella at all. Um, there are some that have a single flagellum on one end or the other. Those are what we call monotrachis. Mono means one, so this is like a single flagella. There are some bacteria that have a group of flagella 
at one pole or the other. There are some bacteria that have two flagella, one at each end, and there are some that have flagella kind of all over the outside. And the arrangement or pattern that you see for flagella is just dictated by the species of bacteria. So some species have no flagella, um, some have one, some have many. And so flagella, <clears throat> flagella are mainly moved, used for motility or movement. And one of the types of flagella movement is called swimming. And in the swimming movement, the filament or the long portion of the flagellum rapidly rotates or spins in a circle. And it's ultimately driven by a motor at the base of the flagellum or in the basal body. And that motor is powered by something called the proton motive force. And that proton motive force you can actually see here. Here's a hydrogen ion or proton. As that proton moves down its concentration gradient, from the periplasmic space into the cell, it actually <clears throat> drives the spinning of the filament in the similar way to a water wheel, right? Where um, water falls over the wheel, the wheel spins and generates electricity. In this case, we have protons spinning the basal body and then ultimately leads to rotating of the flagella and swimming. Another type of flagellar movement that usually exists for bacteria who have peritrichous flagella or flagella all over their outside is a movement called swarming. And you can actually see that swarming movement here in the videos on the right. And so swarming is basically a bunch of bacterial cells all moving together as a group across what we consider a moist surface. Um, one of those moist surfaces that bacteria can swarm on are auger plates, which we usually grow bacteria on in the lab. And bacteria that are able to swarm actually can generate different patterns based on the species of bacteria. So you have one species over here that creates one characteristic swarming pattern and another species over here on the right that creates a different swarming pattern. But both swarming and swimming are dependent on the presence of flagella on these bacteria. And one final type of flagellar movement is a movement that's specific to a particular type of bacteria called spirochetes. Spirochetes are a spiral-shaped bacterium, and they have flagella that actually don't stick out into the environment, but rather are trapped in the periplasmic space between the cell membrane and the outer membrane. And because those flagella are trapped here, along the length of the cell, when they spin, rather than pushing the bacterium forward and swimming, those flagella rotate inside this space and they end up creating this spiral movement of those bacteria, which you can see up here in this GIF. So there are some movements that are driven by the pili or fimbria as well. One type of motility that is not dependent on flagella but pili is called twitching. And twitching is kind of a short, jerky movement that occurs on solid surfaces. And as I said, that's driven by the pili. And you can actually see that twitching motion here in the skiff on the right. There's some short, jerky movements of that bacteria back and forth on a solid surface. This movement or twitching is driven by pili that actually exist at the poles or either end of a bacterial cell. Those pili extend outward, they grab onto a surface, and then the pili retracts into the bacterial cell and pulls the cell forward a little bit at a time. So the pili extends out, grabs onto a surface, and then pulls the bacteria forward. And this whole process is dependent on energy and that energy is, comes from the hydrolysis of ATP. And then one other type of motility that's a more smooth movement along a solid surface rather than kind of a jerky movement like twitching is gliding motility. And you can see gliding motility illustrated here in this GIF. 
This is also thought to be governed by pili, but we're not totally sure about the mechanisms. Um, but as opposed to twitching, gliding is a much more smooth movement, um, where twitching is kind of um, jerky. And so bacteria can move in all of these different ways. They can move using their flagella via swimming or swarming. They can move using pili to twitch or glide. But importantly, bacteria do not move aimlessly um, wherever they kind of feel like. Um, bacteria move with purpose. And generally, they move in response to things that are attractive to them and move away from things that are repellent to them. So if they're moving towards a chemical that they like or moving away from a chemical that they don't like, we refer to this movement as chemotaxis. Taxis means movement and chemo means chemical. So this is movement towards or away from a chemical. And bacteria are able to sense these attractive or repellent chemicals with specialized receptors called chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors can sense the something the bacteria will like and have the bacteria move towards it. Or they can sense the something the bacteria does not like um, and it, it will um, trigger movement away from that particular chemical. And here you can actually see a glucose molecule and then bacteria are exhibiting what's called positive chemotaxis or movement towards something that's attractive to them. Bacteria um, are also able to move in response to other environmental cues. They can move in response to temperatures or light or different oxygen concentrations. And we refer to these different movements <coughs> with some different terms. Bacteria moving towards or away from temperatures is referred to, re referred to as thermotaxis. Bacteria moving away from or towards a light that they prefer is called phototaxis, movement towards light. And bacteria moving towards an oxygen concentration that they prefer is what we refer to as aerotaxis. And so it's important to remember that bacteria are not just kind of moving around aimlessly. They move with purpose, both towards things in a positive way and away from things, which we refer to as kind of a negative taxis. So movement towards stuff is positive taxis, movement away is negative.